City Council workshop. The Hampton City Council held a workshop at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers. Members present Hogback, Davies, Crawley, Lippins, Meyer, and Harms, Addison Hickman. Also present were Mayor Benler, City Manager Ron Dunn, Public Works Director Doug Tarr, and Police Chief Bob Schaefer. There were roughly 20 members of the public in attendance. The following residents addressed the Council Gary Brinkley, Judy Van Raden, Clarence Stewart Riggins, Dan Rodemeyer, Lou Rodemeyer, Rich Hudeback, Steve Everman and Bob Schaefer. All of those addressing the council indicated that they had either had water service lines freeze or have had running or have been running a continual stream of water from a faucet as the city has recommended, reducing the risk of freezing. Some thank the mayor for his efforts to contact them to make sure they were aware of local assistance being offered. They also requested the council to consider making adjustments to water bills to compensate for the excess usage. They suggested averaging recent water bills and using the average for computing amount owed. Doug Tarr indicated that there have been approximately 30 reported frozen lines. The council then discussed the pros and cons of making the requested adjustments. Mayor Bendler pointed out to all in attendance that although the city is not responsible for the water service lines from the water main to the water meters, the city has empathy for citizens affected by the extreme winter conditions and the effects of the water lines. He explained that the city of Hampton has limited options and he praised the efforts of the community reaching out to those in need. For example, the Church of the Living Word and the Franklin Wellness Center have opened their doors for showering and laundering facilities to the public. Ron Dunn explained that some communities have not made adjustments and some have agreed to make adjustments to water bills through an averaging process. He cautioned the council that, that if they considered offering some sort of adjustment, he recommended that citizens who are affected should be required to contact City Hall to be placed on a list of eligible recipients. He also pointed out that the public would need to understand that this is an extreme situation and they shouldn't expect adjustments for other unrelated water usage increases such as broken or running toilets, etc. He indicated that information obtained from the Mesa City engineer estimated approximately 432 gallons of water would come from running a pencil width stream of water from one faucet. There are varying testimonials of the amounts of water running from different faucets. After much discussion, the consensus of the council was to have staff draft a proposal to adjust the water bills based on recent average usage and only customers contacting the city hall will be eligible, eligible for the adjustment. <coughs> Ron will attempt to have a proposal on the February 27th agenda. If it is not ready, it will be considered at the March 13th council meeting. In other business, Ron gave an update on the sponsored project application process. He hopes to have the application submitted by February 28, 2014. Ron indicated that he has contacted Congressman Steve King's office and visited with Senator Charles Grassley about the EPA Buy American regulation that is causing wastewater treatment plant project delays. He has had good response from each office and hopes that it results in a positive turn of events to get the project back on track. Ron explained that the EMC meeting last week was canceled due to weather and has not been rescheduled. Mayor Bendler expressed frustrations with a recent email he had received from the EMA coordinator that effective immediately, no more information will be disseminated to EMC board members prior to meetings because someone shared information that was not intended to be shared. Mayor Bendler hoped that the EMC would understand that board members need to have information ahead of meetings in order to be prepared to make decisions that have an impact on their constituency. Not providing information prior to meetings will only delay the decisions or prolong the process. Doug indicated that the council will be considering a resolution on Thursday's council meeting authorizing the submittal of a TSIP grant application seeking grant funds for the replacement of the traffic signals at the intersections of Highway 3 and 1st Street and Highway 3 and Highway 65. 
Ron stated that he is still waiting for the structural engineer's report of the condition of the curved east wall of the library. The workshop concluded at 7.22 p.m. I have a quick question. Is that 432 gallons that's in the 24-hour period? Correct. Okay. Okay, we're ready for public comments. There are none registered in advance. Anybody wishing to speak? I will. I don't know if there's a hand back here. Please come to the podium. Lisa Slider, on behalf of Hockenhauer Diners, 709 Central and West Hampton. Our water froze, I think, two weeks ago. Is that correct? Bobby Harmon came and unfroze it with his welder. And also, I think, a couple back here. And since then, we've had to have a continuous flow of water. I was told that there would be some sort of – this is why we're here, is you're going to decide on whether to give us credit or continue on. And I'm here as also a landlord. We own a house in town. There's houses in town that – I'm so nervous. That they're refusing to let them or get it running, which I don't agree with. I feel that the landlord should have that fixed and get the tenants running water. And I just want to know, as the city council, what you guys are going to do about it. Because I know we're going to have to continue to run water until at least April. And I don't know if anybody else is going to speak, but I'm concerned about this. And who's to say who's upset with the town and then just turns their water on? I mean, can you figure that out if their water – you know, if their pipes have been froze, are they just going to turn their water on to get credit? You know, I mean, there's that situation. There's – people can't afford to have their water fixed. They can't afford to get their pipes fixed. They can't afford to leave their water running. And in the economy right now, I can't either. So I – that's what I'm here to say. It's on our agenda for a little later this evening. Is that for – did I jump the gun? No, you're fine. We appreciate hearing you. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have business. So we have Daver Creative Solutions regarding an update proposal for the city's website. Good evening, everyone. And basically, Creative Solutions has developed a website for the city five years back. It's 2009. And currently, it looks like the way how things have progressed with the Internet, the code has been five years old, and it's not functioning the way it should. There are certain things with upgrades, with new phones and tablets coming to the market, which were not at that point of time, was not important. The current site does not work, or I should say does not work very well with the existing phones and tablets. So this is what we propose, as to update the website and make sure that the code and everything is compliant. With the updated site, it will be much more easier for the administrator of the website to make changes, update it frequently, and keep it more current. The cost for it is $100 a month, which is a little bit more than what currently is being paid. With this update, we will make sure, or Creative Solutions will make sure, that the site remains updated with code as well as any other problems for the next three years, as long as the contract continues. Any questions on this? How much of an increase is it? Is it $100 a month? Probably, this is going to be around a $30 increase a month. We're paying $48 and some change. Yeah, it's about $50 increase. Well, 
visually will it be any different yes. from a computer? It will be uh, currently the site, the way how site the site looks is going to be different. Uh, the home page will look completely different based on uh, the inputs uh, we've received. We can redo it. Uh, it will load faster on any browser, on any tablet, or any cell phone. City staff's ability to make changes will that? Uh, as of now, currently, there are few pages where the city staff can modify the pages or add content to it. We'll make sure that all the pages will be able to, uh, the, city, the city staff will be able to modify all the pages on it and make sure that it's updated frequently. So they won't have to send us an email saying there are certain changes that need to be done. They can do it whenever they need. The um, the updates that you're referring to that would be on this uh, uh, this three year contract. What types of things would you be doing for us? If we're going to make modifications ourselves on some of the general input, what are the modifications that you would do? The the code of the the code basically, we're going to make it compatible that it works with every single browser, uh, tablet. Uh, and support all the upcoming changes that come up. For example, in the past, in the past few years, updates to Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox were not made that frequently. Now, if you look at it, the updates are much more frequent. Uh, with the with the with the current version of the website and the way how uh, mm -hmm. it is the way how the contract is, it's paid in full. So there is no scope for making any changes to the code where the functionality would not be affected. At this point, we will make sure that the code behind the site will always function with whatever technology upgrades come in the market. And this price includes hosting email? Yes, the price includes hosting an email and the domain registration renewal. Existing emails will still be the same. Uh, based on the current package, you can add more emails also. How many email accounts are we allowed with the current package? I believe there are 15 mil accounts uh, that are allowed on the current that are allowed. Okay. And any more would be additional cost? Uh, I think with this upgrade, uh, you can get up to 25 email accounts. So anything above 25 would be extra cost. Uh, above 35? 25. 25. 25. Okay. So 10 more. Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure I, I'm hearing this right. Then so the increase basically is for the upgrade. And we'll pay for that for the next three years? Yeah, Is that's that right? A, yeah, that's okay. a fifty dollar more. And your role in this will be to perform the upgrade and then if there's any future upgrades that like we'll do all the the city will do their own right. things uh, that updating the text pictures or information, content updating, the city will do the content up, content updating. If they need any help, we'll always be able to there's a uh, there's two hours of maintenance already included in that. Per what? Two hours per per year. Per year. <coughs> Do we know how many times this gets looked at? I mean, as far as somebody logs on and looks at it. Yeah, we do have. We can uh, access those stats. I haven't looked at them recently, but I don't know if you guys have looked recently. We do a lot. I mean, did I forget things? No, I mean, I've used it quite a bit actually, and I do notice that on my because uh, I have the little um, tablet. Tablet, thank you, and it doesn't load very fast sometimes. But I mean, it's not. I might get a little bit annoyed that I just sit there waiting minutes, and then it's not anything that it takes too long. It does take a little bit longer on my cell phone too. Well. Yeah. Plus, I mean, the way how navigation works right now, it doesn't load up correctly. So if you want to go to a particular link, it does not work very well with the navigation mm -hmm. on the cell phone. And I use Firefox at home, and and, and they average an upgrade about every oh, six a year usually or more. And each time it's upgraded, it does get a little slower to get to. Definitely. So all this will change uh, with, the, with the new whole changes on the website. When will the improvements be made? Uh, what we'll do is once uh, this proposal is accepted, uh, we'll sit down uh, with any of the stakeholders and discuss what changes they want because this is the time where uh, we can go ahead and update any or, or accommodate any inputs that you have to make any changes. 
once we finalize on that, it could take around two to four weeks to get everything ready and up and going. But we start paying the higher amount immediately? Uh, no, actually, I think it's dated March 1st. Whenever we sign it, I mean, that's the signing date would be the date when we start work on it. Two hours doesn't seem like very much annual maintenance. Uh, that's that's a good, and actually that's a good thing. I would say um, two hours is what we think of in terms of email issues. If there is something going down in email, and uh, uh, Robbie or any other staff needs help, that's where that two hours gets used. But as of now, the current website, the way things work, uh, there were certain updates that I needed to make, so that those are counted against it. And what we look forward is mostly, and now they wouldn't be, the updates would not be counted against that two hours. No, the, any any other updates in terms of code updates uh, that are additionally required would go towards those two hours. Or any email requirements or any email questions that you'll have or any email changes that are required will go, will go up against that two hours. So for example, if someone buys a new phone, there's a new technology, emails have to be set up again on the phones or iPads on your new computer. That's where the time gets used for, for us to come and install it and make sure that everything starts working. Do we know, since we've had it, if we went over, we've had two hours maintenance prior to this, right? Or currently, right. have we went over that, Ron, or do you know if we It's went pretty close. We have never, I, I don't believe that it's, uh, we have had, we've gone over it. Uh, but I remember there were some updates to the brand shell and a few other uh, things at that point of time we had used What do we use for analysis? Do you use Google Analytics? Or the, with the new server, we will be using Google Analytics, uh, which is much more sophisticated than what the, the current version is for static. And that's included in that? Yeah, that is included. Now I'm going to say the old data will do the updates and you won't have to, like the band shell. Yeah, so then you won't have to come. Right. Yeah. Most of the time, though, your time was did it from your office, you didn't right. come here. Yeah, mostly everything is done through email. So whenever I receive an email for any changes, that's when when we start the work, we put, we put the timer on and that's where we got the time. Is the most time no. Well, excuse me for being a little bit thick here, but we're paying twice as much money, okay? And I'm still a little bit confused as to what's covered in the two hours and what's covered in the $50 extra per month. That's that's my that's a very nice question. Point of view. Uh, currently, the way how the contract was set up was uh, there was a one-time fee for the website, and it was done. Now, what's the disadvantage of that? Is once the money is paid, the hours of work are done. There is nothing that binds us to make the updates unless that we submit a new proposal for any new changes. Looking at technology and how things change frequently, it is always advisable to have a, a dedicated team making all the code updates or making the, the functionality of the website maintained so the site performs, the site loads up correctly on any browser, any application. Uh, that is what we're going to do. Previously, that was not the case. So whatever money was paid is already being used so the fifty dollar more that we are currently that you'll be paying would be going towards building a new site. Would be will be building so there is nothing that we're gonna keep we're not gonna use any existing code because that code does not work or that code won't be working. So we'll be creating new code and that is what that fifty dollars is. The two hours for maintenance is if there is any other structural change that comes up. If, if the city decides if there's a new project and that new project needs to be added. So that two hours will accommodate that time. Or if there is something with the email, if there's a new employee, uh, his email needs to be set up on the phone, tablet, whatever time we spend setting that up will be counted towards those two hours. Since we're going to be signing a new contract, is that two hours? And I would kind of agree with the doubling of the increase, which I understand. Um, is there any way to negotiate that maintenance, that two hour maintenance? Like, can we, I'm just you know, saying, can we have three hours maintenance instead? So I mean, there, is, there shouldn't be any problem uh, in that. I mean, it's not a hard 
value there, okay, after two hours, we won't do it again. We have been working from quite a few years now. So. so let's say in a year and a half, we're halfway into this new contract, and there's a new technology uh, tweak that needs to be made. It will be made. As part of this contract? As part of this. Okay. So in any future uh, technology that comes on, uh, the new system is coded in a way that all new updates are performed on the server. So it will be a server-side update. The whole site is going to shift from a local platform to the cloud. So most of the changes that, that will be made will be made to the site from the cloud infrastructure. Uh, and that's the reason why that's around, that's the reason why your base has a monthly charge, so it's just a okay. And I think you already addressed this, but just to clarify, in the previous contract, the years, the five years that we've been uh, uh, working with you, how many times, how many years have we gone over the two hours of general maintenance? I don't, I don't remember as of now, but I don't think uh, that has been the case. Uh, I think from what I think, maybe, uh, maybe half an hour or an hour max, but that's just, and, and again, in, on, in some years you have not used that half an hour, or it has never gone more than an hour. So I mean, it's just, it sometimes accumulates and then we use it for <coughs> So it carries over if it's not used from one year to the next. We have been doing year. that so far. Okay. We're going to continue to do that? We will. I like your idea a couple of extra hours. I thank, thank you for your yeah. clarification. Yeah. <coughs> I, I, I do too, just because they have to do with the technology. Like, you know, and I don't know a lot about, you know, I know technology changes all the time, but I just think that if we can negotiate a little extra maintenance time, that might justify. Basically, the two hours are for things that we request. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing dollars is to keep us up to speed with what's going if we on in the outside world. I was going to say, perhaps we could, you could review what's been used in the past years, and we can come up with, with an average, or we would be able <coughs> to see what has been used for maintenance, and use that as a basis to decide, like, how many hours would be good for the future. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. What's the line of bills? If, if we go over the two hours, what's the hourly rate? That's $100 an hour. 100 okay. 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 I've got a question regarding the emails. Um, with the police department, it's getting to the point where any, pla any place that we go and do emails with, we need to have secure emails. I understand you're talking about that there would be 25 email addresses that the city could use. Does it <coughs> cost us to have all 25 of those put on there, or is that does that come with this package? Because you had talked about the two hours, and setting up an email would be part of that two hours. So that's really what I wanted to clarify that. Initially, once you go over that 25 emails, over the 25, over the 25 emails. Okay. And, and for secure emails, there's a distinction between regular email and yes. secure email. When you say secure, yeah, but the current emails that we have are not secure in terms of they are not HIPAA compliant or they are not any other compliance driven emails. That would be an extra charge. So would they be more secure than what Gmail, Yahoo, or whatever would be? The current ones that we offer, yes, definitely yes. There won't be any, I mean, after all, spam is something that we cannot control depending on where you list your email, but it's going to be much more better than any of those uh, unpaid options out there. Thank you. decision tonight or is that something you, that he would just get after the fact? I don't know what you were Or we can do it after the fact. I don't think you, we, you've exceeded any of the maintenance in the past years. I don't think and so either. But and if you I don't have, know. If you have, sure. we have to, it hasn't been built. Yeah. And it won't be. Yeah. I, it, 
hasn't been a problem in the past. But in fact, yeah, the maintenance I think is yeah, it's not a real a real or shouldn't I don't think be a big concern. Unless of course you have come up with some other big huge project and that would actually be probably quoted separately and not really dealt with maintenance. I make a motion that we accept the website services uh, sales agreement for the three year contract as it stands. Second. to serve on the Hampton Public Library Board of Trustees, term expiring June 30th, 2015. Any comments? <laughs> Any I would move we approve Nathan C. Subert to be appointed to the Hampton Public Library Board of Trustees, term expiring June 30th of 2015. Second. Motion by Jim, second by Steve. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Consideration of approval of new liquor licensing for Willie's Sports Bar, 10 First Street Northwest, Hampton, Iowa. Ron Harris. Yeah, I don't have any comments unless over there his wife would like to say anything, but uh, everything's ready to go. Move to approve the liquor licensing. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Val. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks for coming. <laughs> Approval of claims is submitted by staff. Claims are in the amount of $102,689.22. Motion. I move we approve the claims. Resolution 2014-03, resolution authorizing application for clean water SRF water restoration sponsored project. Whereas during the 2009 Iowa General Assembly session, legislation was passed to allow additional water quality protection projects called water resource restoration sponsored projects, which include locally directed watershed based projects to address water quality problems within the area in which a publicly owned wastewater utility is located. Whereas the City of Hampton desires to participate in the SRF Water Resource Restoration Sponsored Project Program to improve the water quality through projects and best practices which will lead to reduced contamination, sediment, and waste deposits in local tributaries such as Squaw Creek and Spring Creek. And whereas the City of Hampton will utilize the services of Yankee Colby Associates to prepare an application complying with the established criteria. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hampton, Iowa that application to the Clean Water SRF Water Resource Restoration Sponsored Project Program is authorized and direct staff in collaboration with the Aggie Colby Associates to submit said application upon completion. And then you have a copy in your packet of uh, a draft um, that was as of a couple days ago. It's got a little more for it and it will be, but that's the basis of it. And once we get the signatures uh, resolution, that will be included in that as well. And uh, I'll meet with Yankee Kobe tomorrow. 
and we'll get that in the mail and uh, submit it tomorrow. The deadline is uh, Monday. So, any questions on that? resolution that's being proposed and then I'll go over uh, this sheet here which kind of gives information as to how the process would work. Resolution 2014-06, a resolution approving temporary water sewer adjustments due to inclement weather causing freezing of service lines. Whereas the community of Hampton has been experiencing an unusually extreme cold weather winter pattern that has caused many water service lines to freeze, and the Hampton City Council recognizes the burden this has caused many property owners. And whereas numerous requests have been made to the Hampton City Council for the consideration of a consumption adjustment to their water bill, and whereas the Hampton City Council has listened to the in public input and seeks to offer a water bill adjustment to those members of the public who have found it necessary to run water continuously to avoid frozen water lines. Whereas the Hampton City Council directs city staff to make adjustments calculated using the prior three months average usage and only be available to those customers who have excess usage and have contacted City Hall to request the adjustment. Now therefore be it resolved that the Hampton City Council approves the implementation of a temporary water sewer bill adjustment effective for the April 1st, 2014 billing and direct staff to cease adjustments at the conclusion of the excess usage periods as determined by city staff. Um, customers who have been running water to prevent service lines from freezing will need to register their name and address at City Hall. An adjustment would be made on the April 1st water sewer bill by averaging that customer's November, December, and January usage. Customers who do not register will not be considered for any compensation. Customers may stop at City Hall or call 456-4853 during regular office hours. City Hall office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's this is the proposal that after visiting with staff, you know, I at the workshop I talked about if the council, it seemed the council consensus was to move forward with an adjustment and I, I recommended at the time uh, that we, uh, if we do approve something like that, that we do something that staff isn't gonna take a lot of staff time and uh, be overburdensome, um, something that's simple to apply and and so this is, this is what we've worked out uh, for your consideration, but of course it's up for discussion, so thank you. I have a couple questions. Like you, the example, one example you gave for those that are running water, would this also apply to, let's say, I had a neighbor that did not have water and they borrowed and used a lot of my water, even though, let's say, I wasn't running the water. In other words, it just you wouldn't have to be running the water, but anyone that had excess water usage because they're helping someone else could also call in. That's right. right. Okay. That's, the, that's what we right. intended. Yeah, yeah so I, I would hope so. Out. And then I have a related question. Um, I was contacted by um, someone that said they're renting and the land, their apartment that they're renting from, the water froze up, but the landlord was not going to do anything about it. Now, yeah, that sounds like something Lisa mentioned. Right. Too, and it's something I need to look into. I, I, look I recommended control. that they call you, that the renter yeah. call you. My thought would be since we have the apartment, you know, the landlord inspection, that right. they should be required to do something about it and not just leave that poor renter 
Not the quality of life issue that right. needs to be addressed. But that has come up, so I yeah, wanted to bring that up. That's not necessarily covered by this resolution, but right. it's related to, it's a yeah. problem related to the freezing water. Lisa brought up several good points. And a question in regard to what you just said. Uh, Lisa, were you referring to some situations where the landlords told them not to run the water? No, they just weren't going to fix it. They just flat out told them okay. that they wouldn't fix it. And so I don't agree with that. They, As a landlord, you should... That's their responsibility. It is responsibility to their yes, I, that, tenants. That's same it. situation. I don't know if it's the same person, but I agree with you, Lisa. I mean, I think the landlord should be required or somehow they can't just leave that renter like that at all. You know, and how, and how far back are you going to go? Three months? Or, I mean, I should have brought that up earlier, but are you going to table this tonight? Are you going to discuss it any further? Um, I don't know. I know there's still like 10 people without water out there. So how are they supposed to get their pipes fixed? There's wells that are dried up. I mean, so I don't know. That's why I'm here. One of the points that you brought up, I, I agree with uh, very much. Uh, whatever we put in place, I don't feel that it should be an open door for somebody just to turn the faucets on and let them run. So I, I think that we're facing a situation where we need to establish some maximums <coughs> as far as the amount of, of credit that we uh, the credit that we give. Yeah, how are you going to determine the maximum? I don't know. I'm not sure we can come to a resolution of this tonight. We might have to table it. I think I can make a motion now to approve and adopt resolution 2014-6 because we've got people that are hurting right now. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it's a problem and it needs to be addressed. Oh, I'm, I, I agree with you. And there's, as far as analyzing, you're going to overanalyze, you can overanalyze anything, okay? And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of communities that have already went forward, and you can, after, even after you've done this, you can change or adapt and you can do different things, but this needs to be done first. And today I was speaking with somebody that, um, whose husband, a friend of mine, whose husband works for the Mesa City Water Department, and they have an area that they, you know, they're kind of going back and forth, kind of like we are. They're telling them not to run their water. They're supposed to run their water. They're not sure what to do. Long story short, they had a main freeze. And it's, um, See, and a lot of that they're talking about is Asbury Park up there, for instance. They use, they have septic tanks at various homes, and, uh, and they don't want to run water into okay. a septic tank. Now, should, because, you know, like I told you before, I'm ignorant to this. Should everyone be, I mean, would it be beneficial if everyone was running their water or well, just yeah. certain areas? I know it's very important it in the sense. southwest area because that has the, your your water lines aren't as deep as they are in other okay. the areas. But I've also heard of people up in the northeast part of town where we've got brand new mains that are having problems. I think it's important to measure the temperature of your water. That mm -hmm. should be the determining factor of whether, whether you should running. be running water. Yeah. And when I left, I checked mine before I left. It was 42 degrees. So it's and if you're using water on an ongoing basis during the course of the day, there isn't any reason to let the water run. And I, I think this is a good opportunity for us to work as a community together and use common sense and, and conserve water in any way that we can. But we don't want water freezing out. That we know that. Uh, another thing that I wanted to address was I got a call from a gentleman who's not in town now, but was concerned because uh, the person that he contracted to hook up a welder to free his water out of his water out, told him that the city said he couldn't do that, and that's not true. We're not telling anybody with a welder they can't do it. We've just had one house that had a fire because a neighbor was hooked up uh, to get their water gone. So uh, the better alternative that we offered is some of the jetting that we talked about the other night. There are several companies that are doing water jetting, either with hot water or pressure, and that's the safer way to, to do that without causing a problem down the road. Our temperature this afternoon was only 44 degrees. It's hovering at 42 degrees. Okay. Ours has been reading 50, and we still froze up. Sunday morning, I got up, and we had breakfast at 6 in the morning. We had water. I got up from the table to do the dishes, and we had no water. And, and we 
continue to, to, um, to take the temperature on it, the meat thermometer, and it reads 50, but I still broke. How long are you letting it run uh, to get that reading? How many, how many minutes? Pardon? Well, we've been running it since he put it on. Uh, oh, so it's a continuous stream. Okay. Pencil size. So it's coming from the main at 50 degrees, probably. In your part, it's it varies in neighborhoods. So my concern would be, next year we have the same thing. Um, when would a citizen know when to start doing that? Because I had it that morning, and we had breakfast, and six it got up and no water. When would you? Well, I think it depends on the winter that we have next year. How much snow cover is on the ground? How deep the frost? Yeah, how deep the frost is, the, the length of cold snaps that we have, do we have warm days in between, and so it's hard to say. Or putting out notices um, on radios, you know, for the citizens well, I think, to start watching. Yeah, I think that this will be in our memory for next year for sure, <laughs> probably a couple of years, but I think if it doesn't happen for a few years, it's going to leave the memory of people but that's one of the reasons that we are keeping a list of everybody who had frozen lands because in five years or 10 years, if this happens again, we're gonna proactively contact people and tell them to start measuring sure. the temperature, sure. so. One more question, so it, to make the record clear, there was not an issue by the city that you could not get a welder or anybody to unfreeze your line, no, is that true? We told we did not we don't endorse that practice, but we don't outlaw it. They okay. can do it, but but they can't. We don't let them hook up to the fire hydrant. They can hook up their welder to the inside and then to the curb stop because that's owned by the property owner. But we're asking them not to hook up to fire hydrants because they can't control where the current's going from that point. Okay. Thank you. I think in the case. Uh, where we did have a fire, yeah. it was a house he liked. So he stayed in yes. a couple of houses down. He did. Yep. Yeah. Well, he was doing it. Yep. And Richard is an electrician, so he's still having. We haven't had uh, an electrical problem that night. night. However, our internet router is working fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
way more than everyone else. Um, you know, that's kind of you could maybe. But as far as you, you can't, if somebody's water needs a little bigger than a pencil to not freeze, and they got to make a little bigger than a pencil, so they may use more water. Right? I think it's just a matter of we need to get through this winter, and because every twice a year they clean the, the they clean the mains and they don't they turn the hydrants on for a half hour, and, and there's thousands. Of, so it's not like the water is right. going anywhere. I think the sewer part of the, the bill is the, is the bigger part. Well, you've got your treating the water. And the I mean, cost and, you know, know they're filtering the sewer. They're filtering it through up to the... And a lot of communities are just doing a certain gallons. It's all been there. A lot of, a lot of communities aren't doing anything. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of with Steve, you know. We could sit here and we could argue, I mean, not argue, we could analyze this over and over. I consider it a na natural disaster, and the only difference is between this and a, and a tornado, besides the catastrophe, I don't mean that, is the time. We have time to sit here and discuss it. Now, if this was something that just happened, and it happened to everybody, we wouldn't have that time. We'd have to make a decision right now. I, I'm with Steve. I think, um, you know, if, the, and if there's some, if there's a few people out there that are going to run water just to run water, I'm disappointed, but there's nothing I can do about that. I have a hard time believing there are too many of those. I do too. The sound drives me crazy. I have yeah. to run mine, right. and I hear it, and all I hear is waste, waste, waste. You know, but I know it has to right. run. And my wife, she's constantly, it drives her crazy, and she constantly reach over and shut it off. Wait a minute, you know, yeah. but it's the way it is. I have a point of clarification, uh, Ron. You know, it says here we make an adjustment calculated using prior three months. Now, it doesn't say exactly what the adjustment is. Right. So I guess this is passing this resolution in general, could we take a look at this first round of numbers and just sort of see where they're at and then maybe decide whether it's 100% over the average because we haven't specified that. So uh, in this paragraph here, it talks about make adjustments calculated using the prior three months average usage. We said making an adjustment, but yeah. it's not saying like it has to be above, like anything above that average. We're making an adjustment, and so can we be specific once we see the first round of numbers and decide, sure. rather than, yeah, yeah, because we don't, we don't have yeah. the exact mathematical formula. I mean, it's more of a concept. Yes, we're going to make an adjustment well, based on the three months average. Yeah. Now, what that actual adjustment is, depends on the average. we haven't set. Yeah. So I'm just saying, should I mean, we're going to make an adjustment, but can we look at the numbers and then decide whether if yeah. some are way high? That's you know, we have to be consistent, but I think it might be good to actually see some numbers first before we... Okay, but when, but when we see the numbers, we're sending out bills, so it's too late to make the adjustment. Assuming you send out the bills or we, don't, we can't see them before okay, well, the bills are sent out. Yeah, that will be difficult to, to have a council meeting and... I don't know that that would work. Um, well, I just threw that out as because I'm hearing two different things here. Yeah, and, and well, what, there isn't anything specific, specific in the resolution that says well, what the exact I, form. What this what this is saying is that uh, let's take one one bill for instance. They have six their, their average usage, and we would look at their November, December, January, and it averaged six thousand gallons. And if they uh, in the March reading it was 12,000 mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. we would back it down to 6,000 gallons what's their average yes yeah. we would yeah, yeah. Okay. that That's would be the adjustment to back whatever they the average of what they paid in November December January but so it would be an adjustment to you know, each property whatever their average was for those three months and then this property whatever their average was because some it's an elderly person in this house and she's gonna have a lower average and a family with six kids in this house doing a lot of laundry it's, it's gonna vary in that respect well the extra water that's being used should be just that pencil stream that is, has no bearing on more loads of wash whatever it's that pencil stream mm -hmm. well, all you're doing that is arriving at the average by looking at whatever wash they did but it's just what water they use and how much extra they had to use to run that pencil strip. And I think at this point, I just make the motion and vote it yes or no. And one that more time I just would like to make, I would, 
I would hope that the community would just be grateful for any well, yeah. type of adjustment that we, we decided on making. I'm just I know I will be. Yeah, me too. this gets approved, then this will be the way it will be done until you change it, if you change it again. If you put it on another, the next council agenda and it gets changed, then we, we can We have to that. pass another resolution, yeah. and will, yeah. have, will we have to pass another resolution regardless to put an end to it? Because we don't no. have an ending date on it, or did you say? I put in here that uh, direct city staff to cease the adjustments at the conclusion of the excess okay. usage period as determined by city staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, when, when do people have to, because it sounds like there's been people with two, three weeks and doing this already, so when would you register, when are we? Well, okay, since the workshop, it was on the radio of what was the consensus was, and so we've had people calling in um, to get their name on the list, and, and they know it's not official until you take action. Um, but I'll, I guess I wanted, I wanted to bring up as well, <coughs> We had meter readings uh, last week or a week and a half ago, and the bills got printed today, and they'll be going out in the mail on the first. Now, uh, there's going to be some increased usage on those that were running their water in the last couple weeks, uh, so they're going to they won't get an adjustment on that. Whoever has been running their water and it was you know through a week and a half ago when it was red, they're going to pay more because this isn't going to catch that group, that first wave. This will be for the reading that is done in the, the middle of March for the April 1st billing. And that will catch most of what mm -hmm. the excess is, has been, but there's going to be some that are going to see a higher bill when they get it first of next week. And again, I, I just want to reiterate, I think that that is, a, we are doing something, you know, and I, I can see that, you know, that there's nothing we can do for the bill that's going on now, but at least we're making an attempt to help in the future. Okay, so I guess I'm looking for a motion of some kind. I move to approve and adopt a resolution. Motion by Steve, second by Val. Any further discussion? A roll call vote. Can, can, can we open up the uh, Floor to the public. We got a motion. We need to price right. in answer this price in this discussion period. Is that within reason? We haven't given anybody a chance to uh, have their input. It's discussion time before the roll call vote. Yes. I guess I would. I would like to uh, receive any input from you folks out there. I've been well. watching other cities too, and they're pretty much doing what you guys are. It's pretty gracious of the council to even consider something like this. The city is only responsible for the mains in the town, nothing from the main to the house. So you're really not obligated to do anything. So I think anything that you do should be appreciated by the by the consumers out here. And um, uh, I, I think your average works out pretty good. I'd suggest do it this year and if something needs to be changed because there's a little time, a flywheel effect here because the next bill isn't going to be going out for another month. We don't know when that frost is actually going to start coming up. So you've got a little basis for next year as to kind of what you're doing. But I think I think they've done a fine job. I, I agree with Can I agree with yeah. 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 And I also appreciate what you guys are even yes. considering. Um, it's awesome. So yeah. I think Ron his suggestion how to go about solving the problem is very good. That's a good procedure that follow so far from what we can see. And it is just a one one adjustment, one time adjustment, like in 
May that will see. Right? You're putting a cap on it. Well, out of three, out of the three months. I guess the intent is to when people stop having to run their water after that reading. Okay. So it could be after the April reading, March reading, and April reading. If and if you've already seeing. called in and told yes. them, do you, you, we don't have to do Call anything further. Call in once. Okay. Yeah. Just thank you for even considering what you're doing. No, our li names are on the list. Do we need to call again to apply for this now? Or if you've already you just called answered in. it. No. If they already called in, you know, we were without, because I right. talked to Doug the other yeah. day. And if, if, the, if you, you can always call in just to make sure you're okay. on the list. That, right. That's fine. To yeah. yeah. It's definitely a hardship with your water. <laughs> but it's we Mother Nature. signals at the intersection of Highway 3 and 1st Street and Highway 3 and 65 um, because this grant that we're applying for we could be eligible for 100% funding for full replacement of those so we're, you know, the council has indicated that they want us to go for that so we're going to go for that. Now, now if we don't get the grant there's no guarantee that we're going to replace those so this is so anyway this is the first step in applying for the grant is we need a Council resolution authorizing it. Whereas the Hampton City Council recognizes the importance of traffic safety measures within the city limits of Hampton, and whereas the existing traffic control device is located at the intersections of Highway 3 and 1st Street West, and Highway 3 and Highway 65 are either currently or prone to malfunction due to the age of the equipment exceeding projected longevity, with replacement vital parts for proper function no longer available. And whereas the Hampton City Council desires to replace these traffic control devices with new and properly functioning devices for which replacement parts are readily available if needed in an effort to provide safe and efficient traffic flow for local through and pedestrian traffic at these locations. And whereas the investment in the purchase and installation of such equipment is cost prohibitive to the city's current budget and limited revenue resources and whereas with adequate grant funding to the City of Hampton for this proposed upgrade would allow prompt action for this valuable public safety improvement, and whereas the City of Hampton assures the commitment to adequately maintain proper function of said new traffic control devices upon installation. Now therefore be it resolved that the Hampton City Council approves and adopts resolution 2014-04 for the authorization of application for grant funding from the Iowa Department of Transportation's Traffic Safety Improvement Program, TSIP, for the replacement of two of these two sets of traffic control devices. Thank you. Do I remember right, this is due in August? Yes. When do they announce? I don't know. Well, we don't know. know. So we won't, wouldn't know anything. Six final reading 
an ordinance amending chapter 165, article 11, arterial transitional AT zoning district by adding new subsection 4.3, multi-family dwellings there too. Do we need a final reading of the ordinance for anyone? I move we approve and adopt ordinance number 347, final reading, an ordinance amending section 4, article 12, light industrial zoning district I-1, chapter 165, Hampton Code is section 4, article 13, heavy industrial zoning district I-2, chapter 165, Hampton Code allowing firearm manufacturing and assembly as a principal permitted use. Does anybody have a final reading of that one? We'll look for a motion. Move to approve and adopt. Motion by Steve, second. Second. Second by Bill. Arms? Aye. Hickman? Aye. Hogback? Aye. Davies? Aye. Rosemeyer? Aye. Crowley? Aye. Ordinance number 348, final reading. An ordinance amending section 3E of article 12, light industrial zoning district I-1, and section 3D of article 13, heavy industrial zoning district I-2, chapter 165, removing the words gunpowder from prohibited industrial uses handed in the civil code. Any final reading? Need a motion? I move to approve and adopt 348. I'll second. Motion by Dick, second by Jim. Hickman? Aye. Crowley? Aye. Livensmeyer? Aye. Hogback? Aye. Harms? Aye. Davies? Aye. Ordinance number 349, final reading. An ordinance amending section 6, article 12, light industrial zoning district I-1, chapter 165, Hampton Municipal Code, and section 6, article 13, heavy industrial zoning district I-2, chapter 165, Hampton Municipal Code to approve ammunition manufacturing as a conditional use.
nephew um, basically saying that they had been vacationing in Mexico and were in the taxi and had gotten pulled over and they had drugs in the car and they were in jail and, and needed a thousand dollars in order to get out. And uh, fortunately, they came up to the police department, asked about it, and uh, we got things squared away and, and uh, nobody lost any money. But just so that you know that they're out there. The other thing is, is just to remind you that these uh, sweepstakes or whatever, if anybody, if you need to give somebody money to get money, it's a scam. So I'm just trying to try to keep that in mind. And, uh, other than that, uh, that's about it. I do want to tell, uh, um, give the street guys and Doug uh, kudos for the streets that we have. I know that we have citizens that like to complain about them, but they don't need to go very far. Just drive down to Waterloo and uh, see what some of the streets are like down there, and, and uh, you will really appreciate what we have. So, thank you. Actually, you know, I had people talk to me about the streets and complimenting, mm -hmm. you know, the, how well the street department's done. So I want to pass that on. And the uh, Young Performing Artist Concert fundraiser for Arts Council is Saturday, March 8th. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday. You can get tickets at Center One. And then I do want to just mention again that I hope the staff will, will, and will look into the issue that landlords or a landlord may not be taking care of a frozen pipe problem. Again, I encourage that person to call in. So hopefully they did, so you know who it was. Thanks. Mayor's absent, so he doesn't have a report. So I guess we're looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Steve, second? Second. <coughs>